There's been a dangerous trend lately of uh, the government co-opting churches and their clergy and using them to push their nefarious schemes to uh, uh, round up the American people, especially us dissenters, and to get rid of us. What the clergy needs to do is to tell their people, number one, about the nonviolent Jesus, and if they just can't bring themselves to preach nonviolence, at least teach them the just war principles which have been violated in every one of our conflicts through our lifetimes, and tell your people that participation in wars which do not follow the just war principles are sinful and immoral, and every bullet they fire is another nail in the body of Jesus. If you can't tell your people that, why don't you just take off your collar, put down your Bible, and get an honest job? The Constitution, and in particular the First Amendment, is the source of what we now call separation of church and state. It means that the state doesn't mess with the churches, and the churches don't mess with the state. Uh, as 501c3s, churches may not uh, come out in favor or against particular candidates for office or particular pieces of legislation. They can't tell their people, vote against bill number so-and-so. At the same time, the government must not use the churches to set forth their nefarious schemes of control. This is totally against the First Amendment to the Constitution. All too often, we, the people, have been allowed ourselves to be manipulated by fear. Fear of terrorism, fear of economic collapse, fear of swine flu, for goodness sakes. And they have things that they want to feed us to cure these ills. And of course, this means more control. We see in their solutions some horrible things. The uh, complete takeover of agriculture by Archer Daniels, Midland, and Monsanto, for example. Uh, in their food safety regulations which they want passed, they're going to practically eliminate the family farmer. And when it comes to animals, livestock, even pets, they want a national ID for all of those animals. And they want a small farmer who takes a, a cow or a pig to the county fair to show him. They have to fill out paperwork every time one of their animals leaves their property. Uh, they want to mate with the bull next door, got to report it to the federal government. Uh, they're making it impossible for small farmers to obey the rules and to own any livestock. But it's interesting, the big growers, the big livestock raisers, like Tyson Chicken, for example, are totally exempt from these new regulations. We must educate the people so that the people just pound the members of Congress until we get this kind of stuff killed. We can't afford to have the government and the giant agribusiness corporations taking over and eliminating all competition. One of the things Monsanto wants, and is very near to getting, is a global monopoly on seeds. 
if we allow them to make it impossible for farmers to keep their own seeds and reuse seeds year after year because they're fertile and have to use Monsanto's terminator seeds which have no offspring uh, then Monsanto rules the world's food supply this is just one example of the ways in which this new world order is designed to create corporate monopolies in food, in water, in energy, you name it, they want it. And if we allow them to have it, they have absolute power over our lives. I don't know how we're going to do it, but short of squirreling away a few live seeds, retreating to a mountaintop and barricading you for yourself from the rest of the world, growing your own food, uh, generating your own energy. And believe me, we've considered that for our family. Short of that, the only other option is to defeat these global elites, to prevent them getting these monopolies, and to return power to the people. I've got a large family, seven children, 21 grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. My wife keeps talking about having a retreat that we can bring them all to where they'll be safe and where we'll have our own water supply and grow our own food and generate our own energy with windmills and it sounds great. But if that's what we all do, we abdicate all power to these elites and they'll eventually come get us. We can't do that. We can't give up on America. We can't give up on the Constitution. We can't give up on the truth. We must come together and win this battle. We the people can win. We the people must win. Banning into space, a layered defense to protect the country from nuclear devastation. U.S. spy satellites would watch the world below, detect Soviet missiles blasting off, compute the position and speed of each missile, alert battle stations in space on Earth. Okay, that was Bob Bowman. Uh, you'll probably want to see that again. You can catch it on YouTube or at prisonplanet.com. Now, we're going to show another David Chandler video. This is called The L-Curve. It talks about the distribution of wealth. Dis well, not wealth, income. Now, wealth is another thing, and it will have a similar curve, but maybe even more accented. And who do we elect our representatives? I mean, which area of this graph do we elect our representatives from? Always the very, very rich. Why is it that only the rich people get to represent us? And then look at the legislation. Does it represent you? Doesn't represent me? Tax breaks for the very rich? Take away social services that helps people like me? No, something's wrong with that picture. Well, watch The L Curve by David Chandler. Welcome to the L-Curve. This is a graph of the income distribution of the United States. Picture the population of the United States lined up on a football field, the poorest person on the far left and the richest person on the far right. The vertical scale on this graph is income represented by stacks of $100 bills. Let's zoom in and look at the family on the 50-yard line. The median income in the United States, the middle income, is about $40,000. That would be a stack of $100 bills about an inch and a half high. The majority of Americans lie along the horizontal branch of this graph. It's a long, gradual ramp from essentially zero at the far left 
to $100,000 at the 95-yard line. $100,000 would be a stack of $100 bills, 4 inches high. At the 99-yard line, the graph rises to about 1 foot. This represents an income of about $300,000. When we get to the top one-third of 1 percent, one foot from the goal line, we hit the million-dollar mark. One million dollars is a stack of hundred dollar bills one meter high. One meter is about 40 inches. From there, the graph rises sharply. As we zoom out, we see a tree on the left. This is the height of the giant sequoias, a pretty good picture of what a hundred million dollars looks like. The height of this frame is one kilometer, a little over half a mile. A stack of hundred dollar bills one kilometer high would be one billion dollars. Remember that a billion is a thousand times a million. A kilometer is a thousand meters. If one meter represents one million dollars, a kilometer would be one billion dollars. There are about 400 billionaires in the United States. It's hard to talk about income at this level because this kind of wealth doesn't come every month in a paycheck. This is almost, in, this is almost entirely investment income. Most people make money based on their labor, but money makes money in our economy far more efficiently than what can be earned from labor. As we continue to zoom, we see there is a mountain behind us. The sequoias don't grow in Nepal, but this mountain represents the height of Mount Everest. It's a good picture of what $10 billion looks like. We come now to the top of the stratosphere and the top of our graph. At the 50 kilometer mark, we see Bill Gates' greatest increase in net worth in one year. His overall wealth rises and falls with the stock market, but was reputed to be about $100 billion at one point. Other families have comparable wealth. The Walmart fortune, for instance, is shared by several members of the Walton family, but their total wealth is even greater than the Microsoft fortune. As we zoom back in, try to take it all in. The next time some politician talks about tax cuts, ask yourself whose taxes are being cut and at whose expense. Okay, that was The L Curve by David Chandler. Um, we're going to now leave the show with the opening music video with the music by John Kellerman and the video sequence that goes with the music by uh, another PCM producer, James Rathall. My thanks to both of them for their work on this. So see you on April 2nd. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe.